This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue our year-end conversations, we turn now to the poet Martina Spada. He recently won National Book Award for his collection of poetry, Floaters. The book honors asylum seekers who've drowned trying to cross the Rio Grande into Texas. Martina Spada became just the third Latinx poet to win the National Book Award. Democracy Now!'s Juan Gonzalez and I recently interviewed Martin from his home in Shelburne Falls. He talked about the title of his book, Floaters. Well, much of the book focuses on the theme of uh, migrants and migration. Um, and that ranges from the migrants crossing the southern border to the migrants who made their way to Puerto Rico, uh, from Puerto Rico, rather, to the United States. Um, and so that encompasses uh, not only um, Oscar and Valeria, who were the uh, Salvadoran father and daughter who uh, drowned crossing a Rio Grande in June 2019, um, and then uh, were the subjects of that photograph we all remember that went viral. It also encompasses people like my father, Francisco Luis Espada, Frank Espada, who came to this country in a boat. Um, and uh, he, too, was a migrant, so that makes me the son of a migrant. Um, and so much of the book focuses on that sort of struggle, that sort of survival or, or um, loss of life, um, and uh, ultimately some form of transcendence for that community and the descendants of those who cross over. Um, floaters, by the way, refers most literally to a term used by certain members of the Border Patrol to describe those who drown crossing over. So uh, where I got it was um, after Oscar and Valeria drowned, um, and that photograph went viral, there was a post in the I'm 1015 Border Patrol Facebook group alleging that this photograph was a fake. Um, you know, and, uh, and that's where I saw the use of the word floaters for the first time. And then uh, there was some border, border activists of my acquaintance who confirmed that this was a term commonly in use. Uh, obviously, um, you know, the, this, this kind of oppressive force uh, that's brought to bear on the border has its own vocabulary. And so floaters is a part of that. Now, you mentioned your father, uh, Frank Espada, uh, himself a, a, a renowned photographer, activist, and chronicler of the Puerto Rican migration. He was a big influence on your life, big influence on my life. I met him uh, 60 years ago, and, and uh, he was a, a mentor to me. Uh, could you talk about um, his influence on you and also, if you can, maybe read uh, one of the uh, the poems on, on on the book that uh, where he figures. Absolutely, um, my father Frank Espada uh, was born in Guadalajara, Puerto Rico, in 1930. Died in Pacifica, California, in 2014. He was um, uh, a community organizer. He was a leader. Some people would say the leader of the Puerto Rican community in New York City in the 1960s and early 70s. That was a community of almost one million people. He was also the creator of something called the Puerto Rican Diaspora Documentary Project, a photo documentary of the Puerto Rican migration, because he was a great documentary photographer. Um, his work is now included in the collections of the Smithsonian Museum of American History, the Smithsonian Museum of American Art, the National Portrait gallery and the Library of Congress. Uh, he also published a book by that name, The Puerto Rican Diaspora. Um, and so his photographs hung on the walls of our apartment in the Linden Projects of East New York, Brooklyn, from earliest memory, which means they also hung on the walls of my imagination. And um, I was able to see from earliest memory and earliest imagination um, from my youth the nexus between art and activism 
the nexus between craft and commitment. To me, it was all one. I thought everybody did it this way. And so my father, although he was a photographer, had a great influence on me as a poet, uh, and as a poet of uh, political commitment, a poet of the political imagination. Well, all this came back for me when Hurricane Maria struck the island of Puerto Rico um, four years ago, when we just marked the fourth anniversary of Hurricane Maria. And my father, of course, was already gone. Um, and yet I couldn't help thinking about him. Why? Because suddenly I saw his hometown of Utuado everywhere. I saw it on television. I saw it online. I saw it on social media. Uh, I saw it in um, the articles coming from major publications like the Washington Post. Um, in fact, John Lee Anderson in the pages of the New Yorker said that Utuado had become, quote, a byword for the island's devastation. And here I was in Mass Western Massachusetts watching helplessly. And so I began talking to my father. Um, now, it's not unusual for people to talk to the dead, uh, especially if it so happens you have their corporeal remains in your possession, as I do. I have his ashes in a box on my bookshelf wrapped in a Puerto Rican flag, which is the way he would have wanted it. Um, and so I began talking to the box. And uh, it was strange because I was talking to the box as if my father could hear me, but he did not know what was happening in his beloved Utuado, his beloved Puerto Rico, where ultimately 4,000 people would die, not only due to the hurricane, but of course due to the profound negligence of Donald Trump. And so in the poem I wrote for him, I tell him what's happening, but then I call on him to rise again. Um, the poem I ultimately wrote, which is the last poem in this book, Floaters, is called Letter to My Father, October 2017. You once said, my reward for this life will be a thousand pounds of dirt shoveled in my face. You were wrong. You are seven pounds of ashes in a box, a Puerto Rican flag wrapped around you next to a red brick from the house in Utuado where you were born, all crammed together on my bookshelf. You taught me there is no God, no life after this life, so I know you're not watching me type this letter over my shoulder. When I was a boy, you were God. I watch from the seventh floor of the projects as you walk down into the street to stop a public execution. A big man caught a small man stealing his car, and everyone in Brooklyn heard the car alarm wail of the condemned. He's killing me. At a word from you, the executioner's hand slipped from the hair of the thief. The kid was high, was all you said when you came back to us. When I was a boy, and you were God, we flew to Puerto Rico. You said, my grandfather was the mayor of Utuado. His name was Buenaventura. That means good fortune. I believed in your grandfather's name. I heard the tree frogs tangent to each other all night. I saw a banana leaf and elephant palms sprouting from the mountain's belly. I gnawed the mango's pit and the sweet yellow hair stuck between my teeth. I said to you, you came from another planet. How'd you do it? You said, every morning, just before I woke up, I saw the mountains. Every morning, I see the mountains. And Utuado, three sisters, all in their 70s, all bedridden, all Pentecostales who only left the house but church, lay sleeping on mattresses spread across the floor when the hurricane gutted the mountain the way a butcher slices open a dangled pig and a rolling wall of mud buried them, leaving the fourth sister to stagger into the street, screaming like an unheeded prophet about the end of the world. 
a Utuado, a man who cultivated a garden of aguacate and carambola, feeding the avocado and star fruit to his nieces from New York, so the trees in his garden be headed all at once like the soldiers of a beaten army, and so hanged himself. A Utuado, a welder and a handyman, rigged a pulley with a shopping cart to ferry rice and beans across the river where the bridge collapsed, witnessed the cart swaying above so many hands, and raised the sign that told the helicopters, Campamento los Olvidados, Camp of the Forgotten. Los Olvidados wait seven hours in line for a government meal of Skittles and Vienna sausage, or a tarp to cover the bones of a house with no roof as the fungus grows on their skin from sleeping on mattresses drenched with the spit of the hurricane. They drink the brown water waiting for microscopic monsters in their bellies to visit plagues upon them. A nurse says, these people are gonna have an epidemic. These people are gonna die. The president flips rolls of paper towels to a crowd at a church in Wainabo, Zeus lobbing thunderbolts on the locked ward of his delusions. Down the block, cousin Ricardo Bernice's boy says that somebody stole his can of diesel. I heard somebody ask you once when Puerto Rico needed to be free, and you said, Tres pulgadas de sangre en la calle. Three inches of blood in the street. Now... Three inches of mud flow through the streets of Utuado, and troops patrol the town as if guarding the vein of copper in the ground, as if a shovel digging graves in the backyard might strike the ore below, as if La Brigada swinging machetes to clear the road might remember the last uprising. I know you are not God. I have the proof. Seven pounds of ashes in a box on my bookshelf. Gods do not die, and yet I want you to be God again. Stride from the crowd to seize the president's arm before another roll of paper towels sails away. Thunder Spanish obscenities in his face. Banish him to a roofless rainstorm in Utuado so he unravels one soaked sheet after another till there is nothing left but his cardboard heart. I promised myself I would stop talking to you white box of gray grit. You were deaf even before you died. Hear my promise now. I will take you to the mountains where houses lost like ships at sea rise blue and yellow from the mud. I will open my hands. I will scatter your ashes in Utuado. That's Martina Spada reading his poem, Letter to My Father, the last of the poems in his National Book Award-winning anthology called Floaters. Martin, I want, wanted to ask you, you've appeared on Democracy Now! numerous times over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, what has this show meant to you as a poet, academic, and activist? Democracy Now! was a place where I could get the truth. Democracy Now! was always different. Democracy Now! was not network television. It was not cable television. It was not center to right. It was not mildly liberal. It was a place where I could get the truth the real story, where I could count on the voices I wanted to hear uh, broadcast, uh, of course, over um, both television and radio. Um, I can remember many times driving down the road somewhere, going to my next gig, <laughs> because poets are that way, we're like uh, jazz musicians in that sense. I had put on the radio. 
and there was your voice, Amy, or your voice, Juan, and it felt like home. Um, not to mention all the times that I was um, able to appear on this program and speak my own truth. Uh, not something to be taken for granted at all if you happen to be a, a left-wing Puerto Rican poet. Um, kind of a narrow window there. Um, so it's meant all that and more. Um, and I, I want to... Um, I want to acknowledge that uh, on this uh, 25th anniversary, to keep telling the truth.